blank ads is detrimental to ad monetization. You could be spending a lot of money acquiring traffic, improving your site content. You're running all these ad slots, but you're not making money out of it simply because ads are not showing up on your page. So on this video, I'm going to show you some tips on how to troubleshoot and identify the causes of the issue and address them accordingly. So tip number one, check unfilled ad impressions. On your DFP account, go to reports and yield report. Then you can change the date range depending on your need. And here you can see the percentage of unfilled impressions. If you can bring this down to 0%, perfect. But if you can bring it down, for as long as you bring it down lower than 1%, that's good enough. But again, it depends on how huge your traffic is. Now, click on Unfilled Impressions link, and you will see the breakdown per ad unit. Now, there could be a lot of reasons why an ad unit gets unfilled. It could be because of geo, or it could be not a lot of advertisers or ad networks set up to compete on the inventory, and a whole lot more. So now you have an idea which ad unit gets the most unfilled impressions. You can also go to the query section and run a report. You can find out which geos are getting the most unfilled impressions. So you can set your date range on let's say last seven days. Then you can say add unit or let's start with geo or the country then add unit. And for your metrics you can say unfilled impressions and then run it. Now expect that this data will be huge and you can't just go ahead and scroll down and do all that. So I would suggest export the report in a CSV file or Excel file and do your analysis from there. If you're getting a lot of unfilled impressions for certain countries, focus on those and maybe sign up. Look for more ad networks that can monetize the geo or traffic coming from that country. Tip number two. Check if there's a house line item targeting all your active ad units. House is the lowest priority line item in DFB, but that's our safety net to make sure that if none of the other higher paying or higher priority line items can monetize or serve the impression, house is there to the rescue. So on your reporting section, create a query and try to run a report for the last seven days. You can also do yesterday if you want the most recent view of the stats. Here you can filter, let's say, line item type, and then choose house. Then for your dimension, choose add unit. And you can also filter by device category or add another dimension for device category. And then you can say total impressions. So if you see any ad unit missing from this report or any device that, do, that doesn't get any impression, then that means house is not targeting that line item or device or that ad unit or device. So make sure you go ahead, create your line item, set up house as the priority or line item type, and target the ad unit. What we suggest is set up a house that's targeting run of network for all your ad units. Just target the relevant sizes and upload the creative to make sure that there's a house line item targeting everything. Tip number three, try to check if there's ad exchange on dynamic allocation that's targeting all your active ad units. Ad exchange running on dynamic allocation ensures that ad exchange competes for every single impression or ad request that comes in. To find out, run a query, set up your date range. You can say last seven days or yesterday if you want to get the latest or the most recent one. Then for your dimension, you can say add unit. And let's go back a little bit. Don't forget to filter by line item type again. 
and choose Add Exchange. Then for your metric, you can say Total Impressions. So if there's any ad unit missing on this report or not getting any impression, that means there is no Ad Exchange line item targeting it. And you have to go ahead, set it up, and target your inventory. The next thing you need to do is append the URL where your, the ads are expected to serve and append that with question mark Google FC or Google Force Console. This allows you to check any tagging issues within the page. And now you're going to get this interface at the bottom and there are two tabs. You go, you're going to see Add Slots and Page Request. If there's no issue in tagging or any uh, ad unit deployed on the page, it's going to say page tagged correctly. If there are any issues, it's going to tell you exactly what the problem is and you will have to address those. Number now, tip number five, you have to check now the div IDs deployed on the page. So what you need to do, open the page where the ads are running and view page source. This kind of issue can easily be detected if you're running config test. So m2 debug equals true. And null bids excluded disabled. Pop guru config test should pop up. And our code cannot detect the div on the page. It's going to tell you that exactly here. So there's a test for every ad unit running on the page. And if we have the, the ad unit deployed in the config but not deployed on page, it's going to tell you that div is not on page. So that means you missed deploying the body tag on your page. Aside from that, you can also audit the page source. So if you're running off page and you go to your inventory, add units, search for your active add units running on page. Let's say this one, and you have to search for your add unit code. You should see at least one result when you search for it. And that makes, or that means you have deployed the div ID or the body tag for off page. If you're running on page, it's a different story. If you're running on page, meaning you have the DFP tags deployed on page or defined in the source code. So to audit your divs, find the defined slot. Okay, then you can see or locate the header portion of your DFP tag. Now, you have to make sure that each of the div ID defined in your header has a corresponding body tag. So if, if I search for this div ID, for example, there should be at least two to four results like this one. So that means the body tag has or the header tag has a corresponding div ID that's deployed in the body and that triggers the ad to show on the page. Tip number six is to check and make sure all your header bidding orders and line items are active and delivering. Tip number seven, check your config. Make sure all the PIDs deployed and all the necessary fields are filled out properly. So search for your config. And what you need to do is make sure that the slot field here corresponds to your add unit code exactly. And that's case sensitive. If, in case there's a mismatch between the two, you have to stick with the code. So set it up in here and you also need to have the correct DFP network ID and same with the add unit code here. You need to also have the right device drop down chosen or set up and make sure all the PIDs deployed for every single bidder for this website is correct. The other thing you need to make sure is your reserve price or your CPM floors. So if you have very high CPM floors, 
That means you're also filtering out a lot of advertisers that are eligible to serve or monetize your traffic. So if I have AppNexus set up at, let's say, $1 CPM floor, all advertisers that do not bid or respond with a bid of lower than $1 CPM, they're automatically rejected from the auction. So that could also result to a lot of blank ads because that means less demand. So manage your CPM floors, adjust accordingly, and do your optimization and observe how it impacts performance. Tip number nine is to check one by one ad unit. If you're running non-standard ads on your one by one unit, like for example, um, expendable ads, what else, outstream sliders and all that, most of them are not 100% fill. So they only serve if there's demand for it. So what you can do is set up a passback behind it so that if one ad network could not serve, then you have another, you have a fallback. And that will monetize all the ad requests or page views. If there's no way you can set up a passback, you can also set up a competition for it. So you can sign up with as many ad networks out there that can serve outstream or these non-standard ad formats and have them compete on your inventory and the best CPM always wins for every ad request. And last thing is tip number 10, if you're serving a lot of non 100% fail ad networks, maybe consider getting rid of them. So they're not gonna do or monetize all of the incoming ad requests or page views. And it's very difficult to optimize as well. But if you have your own strategy and you have a solid reason of keeping the non 100% fail ad networks, then try to optimize them based on the true CPM. We're gonna have a separate video discussing that. When you so try to emulate different countries as well and see if you're getting the same issue. All right, guys. So those are some of the tips we can share with you for now. Watch out for more videos and we'll see you guys soon. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to subscribe to our blog to learn to monetize more. Hope to see you here again soon. Bye for now.